been dispatched to a potential snake bite at the Thousand Steps. Code 1, thank you. So it's really important to make sure first of all that there are no dangers at the scene. Do you know where the snake is now? Oh, the ranger did say that it's gone. Beautiful. We're just going to take some obs and a few things first before we start looking after the management of the snake bite. So if you just want to get a GCS or something first, Jack, I'll get a blanket for you. It's freezing out here, isn't it? It's very cold. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Hannah, we're just going to take some obs on me first and then we'll start looking after the management of your bite. We just want to make sure that everything's all right with your heart. And Jackie's going to start looking after the bite. So what we've done here is we've just drawn a circle around the bite. So when we get you to hospital, mm -hmm. if it's all swollen, they'll still be able to see where the bite is. So when they have to look at what kind of snake bite it is, they'll be able to see the site and they can work out what antivenom you need. Okay. Is my leg going to swell? It might swell a bit. But it depends on the snake bite as well. So it's really important to make sure we take a full set of vital signs, including a full GCS and a blood pressure, as these patients can often be hypotensive. With regards to strapping of the snake bite, we need to make sure we firstly remove the patient's shoe and sock. We then begin strapping from the distal end of the limb all the way up and attempting to get a pressure of approximately 50 to 55 millimetres of mercury. Sometimes this can be difficult to measure, so it's just as important to make sure that it's as, as tight as you possibly can. We always make sure we put a piece of gauze onto the bite as well, just to make sure that once we get to the hospital, they can test it for anti-venom if they need to. It's really important that we make sure that we don't wash the bite tight as that also helps for the hospital to assess what type of snake has bitten the patient and thus the correct anti-venom required. So we're trying to strap the patient up as tight as we can because it helps to reduce the actions of the lymphatic system in spreading the venom. It's really necessary to make sure that the patient keeps as immobile as possible. As Hannah's doing a really good job of this right now. As you would have seen in the video that you just saw in regards to the management of a snake bite, we need to take into account the signs and symptoms the patients may present there, as they can vary from person to person, and it all depends on the type of snake and also the health and well-being of the patient involved. Signs and symptoms can include nausea and vomiting, patients may be dizzy, they may have an ultra-conscious state, they can be hypertensive, they can be tachycardic, they can struggle with shortness of breath, they can have muscle pains, issues with articulating their speech, they can have irritability, they can be confused, and they can have a lot of GIT disturbances as well. So it's important that we manage these patients appropriately and follow appropriate guidelines, as this may involve using a few guidelines as well, such as hypervolemia, asthma, anaphylaxis, and the nausea and vomiting guideline too. But all, we need to make sure that these patients are kept as still as possible, so spinal immobilisation may need to be incorporated as well.